Madness. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. It's me and him and the hat. All three of us. All three of us. <laughs> Here, the hat is starting to fall down my head. Yeah, it's, I, I um, know. It's. Have you thought about getting a new hat? I've got a new hat. Have you? Yeah. Well, I've also got the other two older hats. Yeah. I've got this hat, which is my favourite. Yeah. And we just bought a new hat. Right. Um, That's for exciting. For the weird reason that News I think just in. my head is getting smaller. That's true. Yeah. It is. It just confuses me. Yeah. And for some of you out there who watch this show, yes, I know my ears point out. Okay. And the hat pushes down the ears. What are they going to do? Um, <laughs> it's kind of cute. <laughs> That's exactly what she said. <laughs> Anyway, enough so, about your head. Yeah. This week we have someone amazing returning to the show. Yeah, we do. And Paul's pokey is. <laughs> They're on the show every week. They are. Well, no, they didn't used to be as pokey because my head would keep the hat up there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no. Enough about the head already. Can you tell when I'm tired? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so, Alan Berg. Alan Berg, he's on the show soon. Uh, today. Today. He's on the show today. Yes. We like him. We love Alan Berg. He's from a different country and everything. The thing is, is that the gravitas of the man means that we should be more serious than this. Yeah, we should. But the honest truth is that we had such a laugh with Alan and he... Took the mick off behind the scenes yeah. so much, uh, and we had a really good laugh. And he told us he enjoyed and he's doing so the show. Open about stuff, and yeah. he's so fun to chat to. And and you're right, right? He should not want to be on this show. No, he did. It's a little tiny podcast from the south coast of England with hardly any, with three listeners. There we go. With that, <laughs> I was gonna... waiting for three listeners. Mate, do you know I get Alan? If you're listening that? to this back, which you probably don't have time for, but if you're listening to this back. It's a running joke, okay? Alan, if you're listening to this back, you can stop now, okay? Go do something. He, f- he will feel uncomfortable if you're like you're listening because it's more than three listeners. Damn it. Shut up. <laughs> stop showing me numbers. <laughs> well, I can't help it. <laughs> All I do is go to the furthest one yeah. and go, oh, that says four. You scribble, know, scribble, you scribble, know scribble, where really, like, literally, when this show goes out, I'm pretty sure that week's numbers will push us over a very big number. With lots of zeros. I don't want to know. Uh-huh. I'm not going to... No, I'm not knowing. Uh, so, ladies and gents, this is Alan Berg back on the show. He was awesome the first time. He's even more awesome this time. Newton's Nuggets. Welcome back, everybody. Right, I'm really excited about this show. You have no idea how much I love this guy. He has no reason to be on my show. I know that his work is way bigger than all the stuff that I do, but I have so much respect for him. He's given me so many ideas in my business. Actually, he's given me ideas in every business, but he touts himself as a wedding expert. I think it's an outright utter lie, and he made me really happy with a new book that he's brought out recently. So, ladies and gents, I want to introduce you the awesome Mr. Alan Berg. Alan, how are you, mate? Paul, thank you so much for inviting me back. I am doing wonderful. It's uh, it, it's great to be in uh, 2024, and uh, and looking forward. The sun is shining here, and uh, and I'm going to be over there in in the fall. So that this will be great. But it's. Uh... Right. First of all, thank you for coming over here because I know the people you're working with to try and get this done. So to get that out of the way, Alan, you're planning on coming over to the UK in October and doing a little bit of a pit stop tour to help different people with different things, right? Correct. Correct. I'll be speaking at the Photo Booth Expo in London and then we'll be uh, uh, coming down to, um, what is the town, uh, Paul? The New Forest is where you're going to be for for Balmoral. And do a um, uh, do a master class, do a workshop that day, and um, actually staying in the UK a little bit longer because I'm attending a speaker conference. Because just like you listening, coming to conferences to improve your businesses, I do the same thing. But I like to do international ones, not just domestic, because um, uh, not only do I speak in the US, I've spoken in 14 countries, and I'm one of 40 global speaking fellows in the world. So I like to go to some of those other conferences and you know improve my if you. If you don't think you can be better, you're right. And if you know you can be better, you're right. So I go to just try to improve what I do. I, so I now get people asking me for advice on speaking and how to become a speaker. And it amazes me because every time I go to a something to learn more about speaking, I get people going, 
why are you here? You don't need to be here. Well, I disagree. I think I do. Because everywhere I go, if I get one snippet that helps me be more effective or better at what I do, it's worth it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm coming over to the PSA UKI, so the Professional Speaking Association of the UK and Ireland. Uh, it's the uh, kind of a sister to the National Speakers Association in the US. We're all part of the Global Speaking Summit. There's 50, uh, Global Speakers Federation, which there's uh, 15, I think, or 16 groups around the world like us. And um, I was there uh, last year. I was there the year yeah. before. They had it in Ireland. And, you know, again, I, I watch speakers and say, what did they do that was just so good? How, you know, how, how can I learn from that? Not how can I copy it, but how can I learn from it? And I had somebody came up to me at a conference in the States recently. It was Wedding MBA. So there's 5,000 people at this conference. I'm one of the headliners there. And they said, Alan, you know, please don't take this the wrong way. I haven't seen you in a number of years. I thought you were a really good speaker back then, but I think you're so much better now. And I said, no, I don't take that the wrong way. I take that exactly the way you meant that, which is a compliment, which is, I think you're better than you were, even though I thought you were good back then. It's kind of like watching your own kids. You don't see them getting taller, but your friends do because they don't see them all the time. It's, it's that difference there. That was validation for me that the work I put in, the work I put into my speaking, the craft of speaking, the business of speaking, that's important. I, I just spoke for, uh, well, actually spoke at the PSA UKI last year. And then I, I just spoke for a chapter virtually in the States and they wanted me to talk about how to improve their websites. They wanted me to talk about how, about my business, right? Because the, if you think about the wedding and event industry or any anything, there's the craft of whatever you do, right? Like yep. right now there are people installing a new tankless water heater in a house. That's a craft, but they're not the business people right? They, they have a business end of that that's doing that. The guy that sold me isn't here. <laughs> he's not He's not doing the plumbing. Well, you know, in a lot of our businesses, we do everything. So we are doing the business end. We are doing the, the craft end. And you have to be good at both because you can be great at fill in the blank, great photographer, great band, great DJ, great caterer. But if you can't handle the business, you will not have profit and you will go out of business. And too many people find that out the hard way because they don't invest in their business skills or invest in hiring people that have those skills. Yeah, right. I completely agree with you. And you do have really those two options. You even need to make yourself be better and be happy at doing that thing that you were not good at or get someone that's better than you. Right. And, and there's, there's always somebody better than you. I think we have to accept that. Uh, I use a virtual assistant. I actually just did on my podcast. I have the Wedding Business Solutions podcast. I just had an episode. Uh, so if you're listening to this now, so back in January, there was a, um, a gentleman on who has virtual assistants. That's his company's virtual assistants. He used to run a wedding venue group, right? Or a very large one in the States, one of the biggest. And now he has venue, uh, 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 virtual assistants. My virtual assistant, who I taught, <laughs> right? Because I had to teach her to do what I was doing Yep. definitely does it better and faster than I do. There's no question she does it better and faster than I do. And because I, and I taught her and it's just the thing where you have to accept that sometimes people, are, now I didn't bring a virtual assistant on thinking that they would be better and faster. I just thought I don't have to sit with my laptop at night while I should be watching TV with my wife. I should be doing that and let somebody else do these things. Things, if you think about your business, what needs to get done, but you don't need to do it. And that was what I handed off, right? Yeah. So I did that. And well, she was just on holiday and she said, listen, we're going to be on holiday, which is a, a college student a holiday with my family. Any chance you could do it for these three days? So posting on for my podcast, posting on social and stuff. I said, sure. Yeah. I taught her, right? Of course I can do those things. Oh my gosh. It made me appreciate so much what she does. Cause now I had to do them again, but I wasn't in the groove of doing them like, you know, twice a week, like I normally would, it really made me appreciate how much time it saves me. And, and I only did part of it. I didn't do the editing and things that she does for me so much easier. So that, but that's part of business that that's growing and understanding that wasn't an expense. That was an investment. Yeah. yeah. We, you, so since we, since you and I last properly chatted, um, mental theft has grown. The, the speaking part of mental theft has grown and it's got to the point where I don't have the time to handle all the inquiries. So we now have a Pippa who is brilliant and the inquiries come in and Pippa sees them and deals with them. And seriously, Alan, she gets rid of junk 
and I would never even know it happened. You know the kind of thing where where people are trying to get you to do something for free that will help them, that you'll get nothing out of, and it's not really your target market. It's not where you want to focus anyway. Yeah. But the thing is, Paul Newton tries to be liked by everyone and tries to figure out how to do all the things to keep everyone happy. Pippa does not. <laughs> Pippa deals with, gets rid of things that are wrong and deals with the things that are right. And the first thing I normally know about it is, oh, you're doing this on this day. Okay, Pip. Sounds good. <laughs> right. Now, now the other thing is, uh, for my business, I had one point I had somebody that was going to do sales for me, but yeah. I realized that doesn't work because I'm the sales guy. Like I wrote books on this and I teach this. So it didn't work for me not to do that. Other stuff, yes, but that didn't make sense. But this is a learning, it, it's a learning uh, you know, uh, lesson as, as you go through your business and say, okay, I tried that. It didn't work. That was a success. It wasn't a failure. It was a success because I learned I need to do that and, and I can't hand that off, but I can hand off this and this and this, and I can do these other things and they need to get done, but I don't need to do them. And again, find out that people can do them better than you, faster than you. Or if I wasn't doing this, what would I do with that time? And that might be spend more time with your family, right? That That's okay too. I actually just recorded for my own podcast about success. What does success mean to you? And success might mean, you know, going to watch your kid's football game and not being on your phone. That might be success or not missing a school concert or, or a parent teacher conference or whatever. That might be it or something else. Like for me, money is not how I define success anymore, right? A young me did that, right? I don't do that. A new car in the garage, I don't define success because I drive 5,000 miles a year. I fly 100, but I drive five. Paying payments on a car sitting in the garage does, is not successful for me. The car that's in the garage is paid off. That is success for me. Right? But see, you, you change your definition of what that means and what's important to you and learn that you have to define your success, not let somebody else do it. Because very often somebody says, you should do this. You go do that and you don't feel fulfilled. Why? Because it wasn't your success. It wasn't your definition. It was somebody else's. And, and too often we're doing that where we watch somebody and we get jealous. Oh, we need to do what they do. And like, no, you don't. <laughs> you need to do what you should do. See, but that's lovely, isn't it? I can remember um, members of my family telling me and my wife they needed to give up the magic and go and get a proper job. What they couldn't see is that, yeah, I'd work hard on a Friday and Saturday evening, but the rest of the time I was doing it and I loved it. And that to me was always the success of the business. I got to be dad of my daughter. My daughter's now a grumpy teenager and she, you know, everything that I do is uncool and all the rest of it. But she's awesome. And the relationship we have, I know is down to, I could be there as dad so much. Oh, absolutely. Uh, my kids have never known, uh, they've never known me to have a uh, work, an office, I should say, outside the house. Uh, when my, I started in the industry, my older son was turned, just turned three. My wife was pregnant with my younger son. So they've never known difference. So for five years I was selling. So then they were five and eight. Then we, we were publishing two wedding magazines for another five years. So that took them from five to 10 and from eight to 13. Right. So they've, they've, they thought everybody had parents who had an office in the house. Everybody had five computers and a copy machine and a fax machine in their house. We were the house that you would, you know, the neighbors would come ring the doorbell. Hey, can I make a copy? Hey, can I send a fax? You know, now it's nothing. You know, everybody has them. But back then we were the family. They just, he didn't, they didn't know any different. I was the only dad on the field trips when the school took a you know trip with the kids. I was the dad, it was me and all moms. I was at every parent-teacher conference. I was at every concert. I was at every game, right? You can't get that time back, right? My dad wasn't at that, that stuff for me, right? Not a good relationship with him, but again, I, I feel like you say, I have a different relationship with my kids, right? The, I started Taekwondo at 39 because they were doing Taekwondo. And funny thing is I continued when they quit and I went further than them, but that's it's, that's just kind of personalities there. Yep. Uh, but it, it, it is, we, we have a different relationship because of that and what is important to you. And I think you have to step back for yourself and look at your business and say, what am I trying to achieve? And 
I think what I try to teach my clients is let's look at the bottom line, not just the top line. Let's look at the bottom line because you can get sexy top lines with lousy bottom lines. <laughs> let's get some, let's get some top line. So a group I was with the other day, we were talking about how do we increase your average sale, right? Not just how do we get you more sales? How do we increase your average sale so that you're profiting more from each one of those sales? Because genius, it, it's, you know, you want to do more, you want to sell more, lower your price, you'll sell more people. It'll be less profitable. You'll be working harder and less to take home. Can you increase that average sale? And and then do you, do you really know what your inventory is, your calendar inventory? I, I, I've been speaking about this a lot lately. I wrote about this in my latest book. Your most important inventory is not the number of chairs or plates or cameras or DJ equipment or whatever. It's your calendar because that doesn't move. Right. So the calendar is not going to change. And we know that 365 is not the number of available days for weddings because people aren't getting married 365 days a year. So what's your inventory? I had this, um, this guy was going from part-time to full-time. He was made redundant. So he was going from part-time to full-time. I said, okay, so what is our inventory for next year? How many weddings do you want to do? He said, oh, as many as possible. I said, eh. wrong answer. He said, what do you mean? I said, you don't want to do as many as possible because you will burn yourself out. You'll never be home. And no, what is the number you want to do? Now let's see what the total you're trying to profit. Let's get the average sale. Let's back into it. Now we know your pricing, right? As opposed to here's my price. How many do I have to do to, to, to profit? No, let's back into this and say, okay, I'm going to do 50 weddings. I'm going to do 30 weddings. I'm going to do whatever. And I want to make this much money and the price needs to be this. What's the profit on that? Does that get me to the bottom line I want? That's what we should be looking at. And this is different than, in his case, how many music downloads he has, <laughs> right? Because that's an inventory. Speakers are an inventory. Right. That's easy. Just what you've said over the last five minutes is better than most of the business coaches I see on the circuit. I mean, it, it's, 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 it's common sense. Uh, I don't know if you remember the books, uh, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. Right. He said, yeah. what's common sense is not common practice. And it's not common practice because until somebody, until you hear it, you can't act on it. Right. It's just, just human nature. Until we've heard something, we can't act on it. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you hear something and go, whoa, I've never heard it that way before. Okay, good. Good. Because now you have a different perspective. We can't change anybody's mind. It's not ours to change. I can't change yours. You can't change mine. I cannot change my wife's. That's why I'm happily married, right? <laughs> but I can present someone with information they didn't have and they could say, huh, I see it differently now. I can change my mind. I can change my perspective. Um, it, it's kind of like I have a book here, Your Attitude for Success, and I, I give a keynote and I've had people say, you've changed my life. I said, no, 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 no. I, I don't have that power. You changed your life, Right. I don't say this to them, but internally, I'm like, I, I I can't change your life. I gave you a perspective. I gave you information. And then you said, whoa, I see my life different. And now I'm going to go this way. I was a catalyst. Yes, absolutely. But every time you speak, Paul, there's a whole room full of people. And a lot of them are not going to do anything with what you said. Right. But yet you gave the same information to everybody in the room. It's people that it resonated with them. They said, I'm going to take action on this and therefore they're going to be different than they were. Uh, and that's why my, I, I've written about this. I've spoken about this. I never have anything more than three big things on my to-do list because you'll dilute yourself. You won't get anything done if you have too many things there. So whether it's a new book or learning a new language or whatever, I only have three things on the list. And then when you finish those things, you make a new list. You don't go back to what might've been number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, because that was important then. It's not important now or may not be important yeah. now. And so for me, you know, my three things, whatever I checked off, like I checked off, I wrote a new book. I wrote another book over there. I'm learning languages. <clears throat> right? The language is perpetual. You're never done. There's no such thing as finishing. I'm still learning English. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Right? So, you know, French and Italian, and I just added Hawaiian because I might be going to Hawaiian. I figured, let me know a few Hawaiian words. Why not? Aloha, mahalo, um, right? But it, it it's just, it's a challenge and it's always on my list. Once I got the bug and said, I, I want to learn, I, I started learning Spanish to be respectful. That's all I did. I was sitting in Mexico and I had this epiphany. Everybody was talking English. 
the wait staff was talking English, the restaurant, everybody I said, wow, I'm in their country. And, and they, yeah. and we expect them to speak to us in our language. That is why we're arrogant, <laughs> that we are totally arrogant with that. So I just wanted to be able to say, hi, how are you? How's the family? Nice, you know, nice to see you. And when I got to that point, I said, I'm not done. There is no done. So I just kept going, I kept going. And then I ended up presenting in Spanish in five countries and, you know, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and French, I, I, I realized I was fluent in Spanish when I no longer had to translate in my head. Like somebody would speak to me, I could speak to them. I'm not wow. there in French yet. I was supposed to go to Paris in 2020. Uh, COVID stopped that. And so I said, well, I'll just keep going. I'll get there one of these days. Well, then 2021, 2022, 2023. And I just hit three years on Duolingo French. Still don't feel I'm fluent. I'm, I'm really good in writing. I need more conversation, but why not? You know, that's my attitude on life now is not why. That was me as a kid. Why should I do that? Why would I do it? Right? And now yeah. it's like, why not? Is there any good reason why not to? Why not? What is failure? Yeah. Failure means you tried and you didn't get the result you wanted, right? That's all it means. So you've you've touched on something there that actually bothered me because I was I've been I've spoken in Stockholm and in Amsterdam now, which a couple of years ago I thought that was pie in the sky. I didn't think that was going to happen, but it's happened. And each time I've gone to these places, I worry about the fact that I'm arrogant English who doesn't know any other languages and I'm going to get treated like rubbish and they won't understand me. And then you turn up in Stockholm and they speak better English than a bunch of my friends do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just like, this is amazing. A rule I have is whatever country I go into, I learn a few certain things. Thank you. Please. May I L little things. Talk so what, I found, <laughs> what I found out is those people are really, really, receptive to me trying appreciative yeah yeah yes and it amazes yes. me i went into um I, I can't even remember the name of the store in stockholm it, it was like a version of 7-eleven just a nice little store that you could buy some biscuits and some coca-cola from and i went in there and i put the stuff on the counter the lady started flipping it through and in her language she must have said would you like a bag of that and I just went, I'm so sorry, I don't speak your language. And she went, oh, you're English. That's amazing. I can practice. And I'm thinking, you're on probably a minimum wage job. And your English is better than mine. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, I remember, I remember going to Sweden uh, for our 10th anniversary, so a long time ago. And at the time, anybody under 30 was fluent in English because they had to be in school. Over 30, you might not be, right? And I remember walking to a street corner, going to get directions, and there's a group of teenagers. And they were, instead of all being tall, blonde hair, blue eyed, they were mixed group, <clears throat> uh, a, a darker skinned and lighter skinned and whatever. And they're all speaking Swedish, which was looked a little bit weird because here's this, you know, brown person speaking Swedish, like, what, what, what? That, that doesn't look right, right? And they said, excuse me, could you tell us where? And they, boom, right into English. There you go. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, what I find it doesn't my... even seem like there's a thinking moment for the right. switch over. Right. It's amazing. And, and that, that's for me where I've gotten with Spanish is that's when I knew I was fluent is somebody says something in Spanish. So if I'm at a conference and people walk up to my table and I have my books there and I hear them speaking Spanish, I'll say to them, oh, todo mis libros disponible en español. All my books are available in Spanish. And they'll, and they'll say, oh, no, me digas. They, oh, don't, you know what you don't say. And but what's interesting is very often they want to buy them in English to practice their English. And when I was in um, uh, Colombia, South America, in Cartagena, I brought books in Spanish and I brought a few in English just in case. The English ones went first because <laughs> they wanted to practice their English. And then I Amazing. had the Spanish books. But I make I put them in Spanish, again, out of respect. Respect. And what I find with my Spanish is when people correct me, it's not a, oh, you got this wrong. It's let me help you get it right. So if I say something incorrectly or whatever, funny one, when I was in the Cartagena, there was a woman from Bogota who lives in Spain, but she was in Bogota for the conference, or sorry, in Cartagena for the conference. Her mom came in from Bogota and the three of us were going around Cartagena, having a taxi driver take us around. And we're driving around. He, he said to me, you need me to do this in English? I said, no, no, do it in Spanish. I'll tell you if I don't get it. And every once in a while, I was like, you getting this? I'd say, oh, yeah, the British came. They kind of got sick. They didn't fight too hard. They went home. He goes, hey, okay, you got it. There you go. But what was funny is 
the mother was correcting my Spanish and the daughter was correcting the mother because my Spanish was correct, but not correct for Bogota. It was correct for Mexico or something like that because most of my Spanish wow. is more Mexican Spanish. And it was just funny because she wasn't, she wasn't doing it in a nasty way. She was like, oh, no, 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 this is how you say it. And then the daughter's like, no, 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 mama, it's not bien, it's okay, <laughs> right? And I'm just having fun because I'm getting corrected and then correcting the corrector and whatever. And there I am, an American sitting in Colombia, but I'm doing it in Spanish because it's respectful Amazing. because I'm in their language. And, and that has prompted me to want to do more. So I got an inquiry about maybe speaking in Italy. So I said, well, I'll throw Italian in. It's very close to Spanish and French. I'll throw that in there. So I'm learning a little bit of Italian. Same reason as you. Let me go there, be able to say a few things, you know, grazie, and prego, and whatever, you know, say, say a few things and not sound like, uh, you know, I'm asking for a beer, a pizza, or a bathroom, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the three things we get taught in school. That's all I know. <laughs> no, no. In it's school, amazing, I was taught in Spanish uh, that Maria put the pencil on the table, right? I was like, I, I have to meet a Maria and I have to have a pencil, right? <laughs> yeah. Is your name Maria? No. Moving on. <laughs> Just get to the next one. Right. I need, yeah, to, no. I need to ask you about your books because I knew this would happen. We've run out of time already. So you've brought out some new books and you told me the titles earlier. I am so happy because you the titles just made me laugh. What are the new books you brought out, Alan? So the uh, the new one is Stop Selling and Help Them Buy Weddings and Events. And, Brilliant, and it, because you are a weddings expert, correct? Right. And, uh, and then the other book that I came out with was kind of a personal challenge. My most popular book is Shut Up and Sell More Weddings and Events. And <laughs> I've had that book out for a number of years. And it's yep. definitely my most popular book. And I have two custom versions of that. That was, I call it my COVID wins. I was able to do this during COVID is drill down on shut up and sell more weddings and events to make it just for caterers and venues. And another one just for DJs, photo booths, lighting companies, you know, entertainment type of that. But people have been telling me ever since the book came out, you know, what you speak about in that book applies to other businesses, like not in the wedding and event industry. I said, yeah, it does. But I, I would just say, yeah, it does just as a reaction because I believed it did. Yeah. And again, kind of a why not thing for me. I wonder if they're right. If they're really right, then I would be able to write a book, that a version of it that's for anybody. So my very newest one is a version of Shut Up and Sell More, except instead of weddings and events, it's Shut Up and Sell More of just about anything. That's what it says on the cover. And it's just an updated we, we version. We know of it. what my next purchase is because, Alan, we had exactly that talk the last time you came on. I am so glad that enough other people said the same thing to you that you went, actually, let's try this. And again, why and again, why not? And I think the difference between me or people like me or who have adopted this attitude of why not is what what if I don't get to do it? The world doesn't come to an end. The mortgage still gets paid, right? I'm not doing it at, at the ex expense of other things. And yep. And, and I, know, I know people that get hung up. I, I, I'm not coaching, but I help a lot of people who are starting out trying to write their first book because I was there 10 books ago. I was there and actually three of them are in their second edition. So maybe 13 books ago, right? I, I, I was there and people helped me. And the best advice I can tell anybody who's going to write their first book is don't write a book, write words, right? Words become books because of editing not because you wrote it as a book. Don't write chapters. Don't don't pen yourself in with that and say, no, I'm writing chapter one, chapter two. Now I start with an outline. I have bullet points and things like that. Actually the stop selling and help them buy. This was really great, Paul, because people would come up to me and say, Alan, uh, you just spoke about uh, how to respond to a bad review, let's say. Uh, which of your books has that? And it wasn't in any of the books. So I'd say, it's in the next one. <laughs> and... <laughs> And then it happened so often, so I started writing it down. And I came up with this list, and then I went back into the list, and I took out what was kind of duplicates on it, and I had 35 bullet points, and I started filling in the things that people asked about just from those things, like how to respond to a bad review and things like that. And then I made a book, and I said, and when I promoted it, I said, this is the book you helped me write because it's what you asked for. And if we really listen to our customers, we come up with products and services that they want because we're really listening. And, and that's why I love coming to conferences. I love going to the bar and sitting in the restaurant and in the hallway and just talking to people because I start hearing these patterns and go, hmm, 
wait a minute. And my podcast has been for that. I get suggestions and that they go on the podcast and well, that might end up in the book because maybe it isn't in the next book. So I've started a new list called the next, next one. <laughs> How valuable is that? You've got your clients and your potential clients telling you what they want. It happens to all what of us. If we'll yeah. just listen, it happens to all. Think about every product we touch, right? In the room that you're in, in your house, whatever, was because somebody saw there was a need. Now, some people have vision like Steve Jobs and, and gave us what we didn't know we needed because, uh, and I, I teach this in my selling, I think it's in the new book, people can't ask for what they don't know exists, right? So, yeah, if, right, we tend to say, now we might say, hey, has anybody ever done this, right? But pretty much you ask, you, you go and say, oh, I just saw this, let me go get it, right? Or I heard about this new product, let me go get it. But you can't ask for what what you don't know exists. So when somebody says, hey, you know, this is my problem, this is my whatever, and you're looking and going, well, there is no solution to that. Well, why not me, right? Now, I, there are things I'm not going to do. Like I'm not going to sit here engineering products and stuff like that, you know, from scratch and patents because that it's not my skill set. It's not my skill set. Yeah. But there are people, I have a friend of mine whose father has like 40 patents or something like that. That's the way his brain works, right? My brain works this way and it works with the books and it works with the podcast and it works with my speaking. And, and my superpower, if you will, is that people say to me, you know, you're saying things similar to what I've heard from other people, but when you say it, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. it. That's if I, if I've been given a skill, if God gave me a skill, that was it is to be able to say it in a way that you go, that makes perfect sense. Let me try that. Earlier in the interview, <laughs> I, I said to you, the last four minutes, five minutes that you just spoke makes more sense than most of the business coaches I see speaking out there. And in one of the bits of that was when you started saying, well, rather than getting more sales, why don't we just increase the average value? Yeah. Yeah. But instead, for some reason, business owners are out there going, get more sales, get more sales, get more sales. Right. Why not just sell a bit more to the people that already love you and are happy with you? Right. And yeah. maybe you can raise your prices and maybe you can raise the upsell prices and things. I, I think I spoke about that at the Photo Booth Expo. You know, once, if your price is already higher, the upsells that you sell can also be higher because you're at that price point. It's like a, a feature on a Mercedes that a Hyundai has costs more on the Mercedes than it does on the Hyundai when they're the same feature, or at least appear to be the same feature, right? You have that power. And I had somebody else recently who wrote on Facebook, they heard me talking about, you know, they have three prices. I said, but yeah, you have three different price points, but on a Saturday in October, which is your most popular month in their market, you don't have three price points, you have one, and it's only the top one, because you can only do that one. So just, you only need one yes, so just get the one yes at the top price point instead of the bottom. And people are like, oh yeah, but I offer these. I said, you don't have to, it's your business, you don't have to. And all of a sudden, their most popular days, so inventory, right? Their most popular inventory is now going out at a much higher price point, which means their profitability is that much better. And I, I, I have a friend in the UK, I've been trying to tell him this for years, you know, as a DJ there, he had four different price points, right? Just after dinner and then maybe dinner and after dinner and then the drinks reception and that, or maybe all day. I said, no, no, your, your inventory is so low, 25 weddings a year. You have one price. If they want you to come, yeah. that's the price. And if they only need you after dinner, that's it. Uh, I, I yeah. went to Mexico one time and spoke for an hour. That was it. And I said, what else can I do? And they said, that's it. That, that's what we needed you for. We love it. I said, yeah, but I'm here. I, I charge by the day, not by the hour. They're like, no, no, it was great. I felt guilty. I wanted to give them more, but that's all they needed. And they were happy. That's what so. they needed, that's what they wanted, and they loved you for it. Right, what right. What can you give? I mean, right. That's, right. I knew this would happen. We've gone over time, and I need to ask you that one question. It's the annoying question. But what's the one nugget of information you want everyone to walk away with today? We didn't specifically talk about it, but however many times you're following up with the inquiries you're getting, follow up one more time. Love that. I love that. I think so many people give up a bit too soon. Oh, way too soon. We could talk about that. You'll have me back on. We'll talk about that. But if you follow up one more time and you get some more business from it, then follow up one more time after that. And if that's working for you, then follow up one. You're not going to get them all. It's like squeezing a sponge. You squeeze it again, you squeeze it again, you squeeze it again, you keep getting a little more juice out of it. Mate, Alan, I said it earlier, I know you don't need to be on the show. I know that, that you have so many other things you could be doing that are probably way more valuable to you. 
Bud, thank you so much. Um, one promise I need to get from you yeah. is if I go and buy any more of your books and I come and see you in October and get you to sign them Well, you give me to sign them all? I'd be happy to. Absolutely happy to. And if you, and if you don't have my books, you can go to shopallenberg.com. Just shopallenberg.com if you want the paperback. They're also on Audible. And if you want me to read you my book, I can read you my book. Go to getallensbooks.com. It'll take you right to my Audible page. They're also on Kindle. Y todos mis libros disponibles en español. Amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> I don't know how you can switch into a different language so quickly. And I know 100% that Jesse has already taken those website details and they will be in the notes so people can just do an easy click and go. And we'll see you in October in London or in what town is that New in? Forest. New Forest. Absolutely. New Looking Forest. Mate, to it. It's a gorgeous area. You're going to love it. And if we get a chance, I'll take you out to some nice restaurant down there. It's stunning down there, mate. Mr. Allen Berg, ladies and gents, this gent is amazing. Go ahead and have a look at his website. Go and listen to his podcast. Spend some time with him on the podcast because it's awesome. It's one of my favorite listens. We're now going to go to the bit with me and Jesse talking about Alan behind his back. Alan, do you want to say goodbye to everyone? Goodbye, everyone. I, I Absolutely. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you in October. And if you have any questions, just go to my website, reach out, allenberg.com. Perfect. Thank you, buddy. Right. We'll see you with Jesse in a minute. Mutants Nuggets. Welcome back, everyone. So that was Alan. Right. We warned you how awesome he was. And seriously, Alan, if you are listening to this, thank you so much for coming onto the show, mate. We know you're busy. We know you could be doing things way bigger than this. I mean, the conventions he's been doing. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And the he's, stuff he's been speaking of. He's coming back to England. He said in the show he's coming back yeah. to England soon. In October, he's at the, the photo, photo booth, booth thing. thing. He's also doing the thing here at Balmalorn. Oh, is he? Has that gone public? Uh oh. I don't know. What did he talk? Uh, to Hello? be honest, right, the, we have a couple of issues here. The first issue is we only really remember the whole conversations when we do these records, but there's generally a lot of chit chatting before and yeah. after. And so. the reality is, is that we recorded this well between recording with Alan yeah. and now recording these end bits. Yeah, we've done another like fifteen shows. <laughs> there's also the other issue that. I know people who are organising things. Yes. In the events world. Yes. Who may or may not want to book someone as awesome as Alan. So, <laughs> if anyone is listening to this. Yes. And would like a sales training helpful workshop day. Yeah. On the South Coast. Subscribed to uh, the podcast you're currently listening to for the announcement and go to patreon.com forward slash Newton's Nuggets and you can actually subscribe for free just to get notifications yeah, on new can. episodes and news and stuff. And if you want to see extra funny content, because we've oh, we started a thing, we started a thing, started and a thing. there's a load of well, actually, we've been quite active on the behind the paywall bit because there's certain things that we won't put out without it being behind the paywall. Yeah. Um, uh, but we are just getting a little bit more relaxed. Is with some of that about. thing me singing? Yes. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking because Alan Berg did a little funny little thing and I don't know if it was right. recorded. I've got to say something. Yeah. Right. The October thing is on my notes. Yes. So I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to have told people. Okay. So I don't think... Because we could get in trouble here from Peter, Ruth, and Alan. Yes. And we know... At least one of those people listens to the show on a regular. Sorry. 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 Um... <laughs> but if you want tickets to it, give me a shout. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put you in touch with the people. Yeah. Um. Yeah. At, at the end of the call, Alan did something quite cool and very funny. Yeah. And I don't know if it's recorded or not. So if it's recorded, it'll be going on the Patreon. But he's uh, he's just so such a much nice time guy. for him. Yeah, Do you know, and somebody who's hit that level of success. Yeah, you you kind of right in my world of entertainment, you expect a bit of diva ish from them. Yeah, but there's not. There's not. But even more, like he's he's hit that level where he's just busy all the time. Yeah, and what I really loved was that he. 
in that moment, he's gen- he's there with you, just having a great time. And we've had right, we've had people who are not the same level as Alan that have turned up late and not apologised. Yeah, and you know, just just been a bit hard to work with. Yeah, um, don't get me wrong, I've loved everybody that's been on the show, but sometimes you you feel like it's harder work to get to where yeah we need it to be. Yeah. And, and that's not just, even scheduling things because we've got some people, and you know, it's a, you have to reschedule and stuff, and that's life that yeah. that genuinely happens. Yeah. And you know, don't all the rest care about of that. that at all. But we we do, yeah. We we I don't think we've ever had what I'd call a negative experience, but no. you do notice the difference between some people. And you know, we have had a negative, did we? Yeah, did we? And they ended up not going on the show. Oh yeah, yeah. So actually, we have had one that I ended up going. Uh, no way. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Try typing that. Um, so, yeah, we did have one that I... And for me to turn around yeah. and just go, I'm done. Yeah. That's that's quite... I have quite a high tolerance level Yeah. of numpties. Yeah. Um, well, I don't, but publicly I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say. And I, just, yeah, I remember just going, nope, this one's done. It's scrapped. And the first thing you knew about it was it was taken out of the diary. Yeah. And you messaged me going, oh, is, are they okay? Is there a problem? Yeah, I think they're okay. I just told them where to go. <laughs> um, Which is really rare. Yeah. Because yeah. we'll, we'll generally, we're, I mean, we're very understand. That's We promote on the show about being understanding with people. This is this. it. And what you said about rescheduling. There's, um, there's a great friend to the show. Absolutely lovely person. Yes. Nearly. I was close. Between them and I. Yes. And and so I th- I think we're at about a fifty fifty level. Fifty percent of it's been my fault. Fifty percent have been their fault. We've had to reschedule six times now. Yeah. Okay. For one show. Yeah. But the thing is, every single time, it's for reasons that the other one's gone. Do it. Do yeah. it. Just do, are you okay? Yeah. Kind of thing. I don't care about rescheduling. I'd yeah. prefer to know you're all right. Yeah. But yeah. There's and one. there's generally on both sides. There's always been notice. It's have not you ever like noticed it's... that we we ramble a lot? Yes. This has not been about Alan for the last ten minutes. No. I, well, it kind of has been sparked by him because he's such it's a nice, nice professional guy. And I mean, oh, and that's over and beyond the thing that's really obvious, which is what he says is actually really useful. <laughs> oh, and then and new books, right? So yes. we we know about the new book coming out, which is going to be awesome. Yes, just going to be awesome. Um, if you want to get copies of his book, go to Amazon. Just search Alan Berg. Go to his website. I'm sure that he does some deal where you can buy direct as well. Um, and his nugget. I am going to mention his nugget. Oh, okay. I have to mention this because of the way I put it in my notes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now yes. you you wrote down the full nugget. I'm going to tell people what I wrote down. Okay. Yes. I've just seen it, and I'm looking forward to this. I wrote. So, so I'll normally do NUG to know where the nugget is. I write in my own shorthand. And I wrote, F you one more. <laughs> Which I knows mean, I knows, I knows, knows means follow up once more. So with yeah. all of those inquiries you had, no matter how many times you followed up, follow up just one more time. And I thought it was a great nugget, but I got all excited about it and didn't go back to my notes to edit it. Yeah. So remember people, F you one more. And one of the things that I've experienced recently on that front yeah. is... Just do not assume that the reason that the somebody, you know, your potential customer hasn't been in touch is for any particular reason. Yeah. Because I had genuine, like recently I had an, a situation where I genuinely thought they'd just gone to another person. And I was okay with that. And we would had that conversation. And that wasn't it at all. They just something came up literally while we were going backwards and forwards on uh, on messages. Yeah, and then we'd kind of got towards the end, but it ended very abruptly the conversation. Yeah, and I thought they'd just gone away. Yeah, and then which is okay, which was fine because I, I I'm talking wedding photography here, so I my I thing always is it's very personal. Yeah, so I'm there to help and provide what they want. But if I'm not what they want, I'm happy to even help find someone else because yeah. I know other amazing people that are happily. See, recommend. I've got I've got an email. If I if I'm if I'm following up with people via email, which is most of the times, yeah. I do. Um, I have a certain amount of follow up emails, and then I have a last one, yeah, which is a bit sarcastic, yeah, and a bit funny, yeah. 
But most of these people have already met me and they've seen me performing. And I think this email comes across as very much Paul's attitude. Yeah. And it's along the lines of, look, I'm, I'm great at magic. I've been told. <laughs> I'm good at that. Yeah. I've also been told I'm rubbish at emails. So if that's why you haven't got back, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm rubbish at this stuff. Yeah. I just want to wish you all the best. Yeah. And seriously, when I said to you, if there's anything else you want to help with other than the entertainment stuff, happy to let you know who my contacts are. And if you need help with, you know, photography, venue, to all of this, yeah, that is please, it's still open, even if you've picked another magician. I don't mind. Yeah, hope you have a great one. Love you lots. Paul Newton, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, and do you know what? That gets me the most people coming back and yeah. going. Sorry, we've just been busy with whatever they've been busy with, and they won't still want to talk. Yeah. And and the thing is as well was, and you've got to think about what it is that you're doing. So like generally speaking, there's. In my case, is normally if they've not gone for me, they've gone for someone else. Yeah. One of the things in other industries I've worked with is you get very familiar with the fact that there's always a choice. Yeah. But it doesn't mean they've gone for a competitor. Very often on certain things, and magic's one of those, the choice is they've gone for the competition that is do nothing. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's that's why I would say entertainment. Yeah. Because they might their budget might be do we have him or do we have the ice cream cart? Yeah. Do we have him or do we have nothing? Do we have him or do we go for the caricaturist? And yeah. you know they, it's weird. But I know I'm not the top of the list for priorities, mm. and I'm good with that to be honest. Yeah. Um. Yeah, oh my word, we've gone from talking about Alan to talking about sales techniques, which <laughs> Alan promotes. Right, are we happy? Have we done everything? Yes. We have no announcements this week. No, just the same same thing at the minute. We're really pushing people coming, even if it's for free, because you can do it for free, yeah. come and join our Patreon. There's a link in the chat, and it's just patreon.com forward slash Newton's Nuggets. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, yeah. But come in and sign up, and if you sign up and pay, you get a load of stuff, you get some merch and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is great. But actually, if you just kind of sign up for free, you get, if we do a post, that is for everyone, i.e. not behind the paywall stuff, then you'll get notified. So like when the new episode goes out and we post out to say the new episode's out and we'll do a little description, yep. you'll get an email to come through that just goes, by the way. And it works really well. It works really well. Um, people have been asking us to to let them know about things that are coming up and going on. This is our way of doing that without yep. costing you any money and making it easy for Jesse. Because yep. I hate technology. And we're whilst we're putting low now we're at the stage that we're actually putting quite a lot of content out on behind the paywall, as it were. Yeah. We're actually it means that we're also putting lots of stuff on there for free as well, so that you're getting quite a bit even if you sign up for free. Um but if you want the really funny and behind the scenes stuff and all of that, then um, I think it's just it's a fiver a month and yeah. none of it's contracted. So there's been people we always say like with the merch, you need to be signed up for two months, I think was the thing. But re- literally, if you just wanted the merch, so like, for example, you wanted the hoodie, go for the option that has the hoodie in it. And then sign up for two months if you want to. And then you yeah. get the hoodie and some other stuff and badges and, and stuff like that. Cool. So, yeah, it's really cool. We love the Patreon thing. Right. We we loved it before. And so. it's, it's also the functionality of it. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I just want to finish on one thing, which is uh, last week there was a lot of stuff. It was a Paul and Jess show. There was a lot of stuff. There was a couple of things that I shared about health stuff and my buddy. Um, for To all of you, for the messages that I got about both of those things, thank you so much. Um and it, it ranged from people offering to help mm. and people offering to talk and things like that. Yeah. I'm still in the attitude of I've got the people I talk to, so I'm kind of keeping it within that. Yeah. Um, but the, even just the messages of uh, I've got loads of we got you back. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. So thank you so much. That that stays between me and the people who sent them and the people who said it and the people who hinted it yeah. really appreciate it and also thanks to the people who have messaged that just needed to hear some of it as well I think that yeah. that's, that's why we do it because if we yeah. can help people that's great um, so on that I think we're done right yeah ladies and gents thank you very much for coming to listening to another episode of Newton's Nuggets I love that you get ready for that now <laughs> <laughs> Nuggets! 
Hello everybody, right, you're on the YouTube page. This is what we want you to do. The first and the most important one is subscribe. It should be just up there. Then if you want to see more Newton's Nugget stuff, it's down there at that one. If you want to see things about the business speaking, hopefully that's up there. And then last but not least, the mental theft stuff we're working on down the bottom there. Go, subscribe. That's the big important one. And you know, share it as well. Why not?